Today we'll be painting some Orc Berserkers from the Warlord line by Reaper. Here's a rundown of the colors we'll be using. We've got dusky skin colors, stormy gray and blade steel, a couple of browns from the Bones line, as well as our normal washes, some scorched metal, and other colors for details. So let's begin painting. First, I'm going to go ahead and take these orcs, they're all primed nice and black, and I'm going to apply a base coat of dusky skin over all of the exposed flesh. Now because these are very large and very muscular orcs, there's quite a bit of ground to cover, so I'm using a large flat brush to get as much coverage as possible. I've thinned down the paint a little bit, but not too much. We don't need to be super neat on this, on account of the fact that it's just the first base coat, so please feel free to save some time and slop this paint on as quick as you can. We're doing six models now, as I prefer to focus on workflow instead of technique. There's plenty of YouTube channels out there that'll show you techniques, but not that many teach you how to really batch paint for tabletop quality. That's what I'm doing with these guys. Next, I'm moving on to Stormy Gray by Reaper. For this, I'm going to use be a little bit more precise, using one of my normal Skolinski hairbrushes. We're going to go and just paint on all of the hair as well as the fur. We're going to have this in a nice dark black color. We'll be applying multiple coats of a wash afterwards to go and bring out those shadows. Next, we're going to move to blade steel as I'm going to adjust the camera, and we're going to get just a little bit on those axe heads. Now we don't have a tremendous amount of silver on these miniatures. For the most part it's going to be the axe heads, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on the chain mail as well, and a couple accent pieces just to go ahead and add a little bit more variety to these figures. Next we move on to Nulled Oil. The Citadel wash is perfect for bringing out details on most bright colors or darker colors like this, like these basically going to be a black wash and we're going to be applying it over all the figures. This will settle into the recesses to create a much more highly defined shadow, but it's also going to glaze the surfaces and just darken everything down by itself. Next, after we've let the null oil dry, we're going to apply dusky skin again and neaten up all those muscles, but we're going to make sure to leave all the cracks and crevices in that nice, beautiful, dark color. As you can see, this is going to make these orcs look like they lift, and they lift hard. Personally, I enjoy painting with lots of skin tones with big muscles, just because it's kind of like what I enjoy. I decided to go with a gray skin tone on these orcs, because I wanted them to be more for Dungeons and Dragons than lots more hair. If you're looking for a much faster way to do this, you could just dry brush the skin and then before moving on to the next highlight step. That's perfectly acceptable too, but I like my muscles to be nice and defined, especially when they're this big. This is probably the single most time-consuming step in the entire process, as we have to go over all the muscles on all six of these orcs. Don't worry, the little bit of time is well worth the final effect. Next, we're moving on to another stage of highlighting where I'm going to go ahead and do a 50-50 mix of Dusky Skin and Dusky Skin Highlight. Now when I do this, I'm using a script liner, which I like to use for all of my fine detail. And all I'm doing is a single fine line across each one of the muscles and across the knuckles. Now notice when I move across these works, I like to go ahead and move the same way on every model in the same general direction. This helps prevent you from missing areas, 
but it also gives you a nice flow and you can move quickly. Keep in mind, I do still miss details when I'm doing this, and I do go back and fix them at appropriate times. Time for us to move on to the browns. I'm going to go ahead and start out with my base coat. That's going to be the darkest brown I have. And we're going to go and start painting everything on there that's going to be the leather. Pants, boots, belts, and straps. I like having these shoulder pads being a nice brown to make them look like a hard-boiled leather. Now you may notice while I'm painting this step, I'm not being very neat, and that's because it's base coat. But it's also because we're going to be going over everything with a pretty heavy wash once we take care of all of our brown parts. Now this paint itself does look like a rather warm brown, but once we apply that wash, it'll darken down a little bit. You may notice that some parts I'm actually not painting brown that looks like they should be. We're going to be using those as an accent color in a little bit to go ahead and give these works a little bit more variety so they don't just look gray and brown. Next, I'm taking charred brown, and I'm only going to be applying it along the halves of the axis. It's going to give us a nice bit of contrast between that and the rest of the brown. And it's going to make these look like a really dark, heavily seasoned wood. Something stout that could hold up to the heavy chopping these guys are probably doing. Next, time to go on to Reaper Scorched Metal. Now, I like the idea of my orcs not all having fine iron and steel weapons. So we're going to go ahead and apply this to all the armor bits that we haven't painted yet. We're going to turn them into a nice brassy bronze. Some sort of metal that's easier to work with, probably easier to come by than good quality steel. Scorched Metal is going to form a good base for this. We'll be building up from there, but it's a nice dark metal. Again, when focusing on batch painting and workflow, it's a good idea to go ahead and focus on one sculpt and do all, do all miniatures with that body type, and then move on to the next one. Right here, I'm painting the top knot holder of this guy, because he's the only one who has it. And I'm making sure to do that first, so I don't accidentally forget it when I'm moving in my nice little flow. We're going to use some Runelord Brass by Games Workshop. We're going to dab a little bit there on our palette that I'm using for my board, and we're just going to go into a really quick dry brush over all of the metal areas. After that, it's time for Agrax Earthshade. This we're going to go and apply to all the brown bits and all of that brass metal. Now this is the second wash we're going to be using, and like the gnome, like the gnome oil, it's going to take some time to dry. So once this is on, you're going to want to place the miniatures under a fan or some, have some sort of airflow to make sure that they're completely dry before moving on. Because we're already starting with some pretty light colored brown, you can feel free to apply this quite liberally. Normally paints are better with multiple thin coats, but in this case you can pretty much slop this stuff on. Do be careful if you do, though, to keep an eye for pooling. Shades are very thin, so they are ruled by gravity, and they may pool at the bottom of the figure. Time for some aged bone. So with this, I'm going to take my Zero Kalinske Sable. I'm going to apply this to all the teeth, claws, and eyes. Now when I move to the eyes, I'm going to be switching back over to my script liners. That's a very fine detail. This requires a lot of steady handwork, so I may accidentally be moving it out of the frame for a little bit. Still working on getting some of the procedures done for these time lapses. Once all those claws and eyes are taken care of, I'm going to be going ahead back to the skin tone and evening up to make sure that I'm not accidentally spilling over onto their eye sockets. It happened a couple times with these guys, but that, that's very common when working with something like that. Try to get it as close to pop the mix as you did before. Now 
Next, we're going to go and move on to rich leather, and we're going to start highlighting those burns. Now, I feathered out that shoulder pad just to give it a little bit more of a rough look. A little bit of highlighting can go a long way, especially when you get that nice and deep wash. A lot of people like leaving the washes, but I think you should almost always do at least one layer of highlight. I'm going to take Seraphim Sepia and I'm going to apply it to all the tusks and all of the fangs and all the claws. This is going to darken them up. I'm going to move to Dragon Green and I'm going to go ahead and start hitting up all of these little accent details that I left unpainted before. Especially when your miniature is mostly in different types of grays and browns, doing some sort of brighter color accent is very important because it breaks up the colors and makes it far more interesting to the eye. In this case, I decided to go with the green, mostly because I like green, but also because so many people paint their orcs green, and I wanted to kind of keep a little bit of that. Next, we have polished bone. We're just going to move it on. We're going to have some desert stone. This is going to be a final highlight of all that brown light. We're not doing much. We're just doing a tiny bit of edging. Edge highlighting is a good way to make things really pop out on flatter surfaces. Very similar to how we just did the single line across the muscles, but in this we're just going to do it on the edges. Next we're doing a wash of BL Tan Green all across those green accents to kind of give them a little bit more depth. Same thing as with the brown and the black washes. For the back half of the video, you may notice that I'm jumping between different colors. I'm doing this so that I can keep painting while the washes are dry. That dry time is one of the fastest ways to kill your productivity and make things take longer. Right here I'm highlighting all the fangs with polished bone, as well as stitches, straps, and other things that I think should just pop a little bit more off of the brown. Next, let's go ahead and move up to a lighter green so we can do a quick highlight on all of those green accents. Taking care of the brown and the ivory gave me just enough time for that wash to dry because the last thing you want to do is try to paint over a wet wash. Next, we're going to go back to rich leather, and here we're watering it down quite a bit, and I'm applying it to the base. Now, I use a lot of ballast on my bases, so that it sucks up paint like nobody's business. Here, you want to thin it down almost to the consistency of the shape, so it goes down in all those recesses. As a fair warning, this will take a long time to dry, and I paused the video when I was doing it. This is a good opportunity to walk away, do some assembly on other models, or just take a bathroom break if that's what you need. While I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm going to go back over and take care of some wristbands of green that I forgot to do the first time. Stuff tends to blend in when you're doing models with a similar type. After that, let's take some blade steel and just do a really quick dry brush along those axe heads to make them look like they're sharp and glinting. Alright, now that those bases have dried, we're going to do another sloppy step and we're going to apply a heavy Agrax Earthshade across all that ballast. Let's give it some depth, give it some dark, and then we'll dry brush after it when it's done. This is another step that will take a long time to dry, so I do recommend having the fan on. Once that is all dry, let's go ahead and dry brush some desert stone onto the bases to give them a little bit more pop. Now they're going to look like they're just all walking on some nasty, dirty ground. Finally, we're going to go ahead and use Abaddon Black to rain the bases. Now, my Abaddon Black is thick from being in a paint pot and getting a lot of air into it, and I pretty much only use it for rimming bases at this point. You'll rarely find me using any sort of pure black when I paint. Finally, we have a little bit of super glue, and we're going to put some Deadland Tufts by the Army Painter on these bases to just make them a little bit more interesting.
here we have the final result. We have six forks painted in no time at all. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.